Welcome back to another time sticking YouTube video. Today we're going to be exploring a very old clock that helped set a precedent for timekeeping generally. So stick with us through our intro and we're going to break it down with you. Long before satellites could pinpoint our exact location on the planet, before atomic oscillations gave us very, very precise time, we had pen, paper, ingenuity, and mechanical inventions. If the accent's any hint, British invention is what came along and made the first marine chronometer. For ages, ambient temperatures and varying climates had been baffling explorers, travelers, and horologists alike who were trying to take accurate measurements of distance across swaths of time. That was until the invention of the first functional marine chronometer by John Harrison in the 18th century. A humble Yorkshire carpenter at the time, he blew well-established clockmakers out of the water with his chronometer prototype in 1730. But before his invention began making waves, Inventing the first marine chronometer was a transcontinental quest which had been ticking for centuries. Before John Harrison's invention, England was taking on what they referred to as the longitude problem. Referencing the longitude problem, the Brits wanted to tackle measuring accurate time while mapping at sea. Taking things very seriously, the English passed the Longitude Act of 1714. This act established a longitude prize through their parliament. Prize money awards were distributed on the basis of three main criteria. Chronometer methods had to be able to determine longitude within one degree, determine longitude within 40 minutes, or more accurately determine longitude within 30 minutes. Each one of these specifics would be awarded in order a sum of 10,000, 15,000, or 20,000 British pounds. It was a pretty massive incentive where each one of those mentioned specifications paid up to nearly 2.6 million pounds in today's terms. That's approximately 3.2 million US dollars. European nations, Portugal, Spain, and the Netherlands had also offered monetary awards for solving the problem, all the way back to the late 1500s. However, when England's government put out their Longitude Act, they gripped Europe's attention almost immediately. It was likely the instant millionaire allure Kind of like who wants to be a millionaire, if I can date myself. Previous attempts from original pendulum clock inventor Christian Hedgens in the 1670s, as well as other European inventors, proposed many methods up until the Longitude Act was established in England. But it wasn't until 1730 that a truly revolutionary design would arise to solve the ever-present longitude problem. This is where John Harrison's H1 chronometer comes into play, as well as other inventions that he would later make throughout his career. As it were, Jeremy Thacker, British from 714, began one of the first recorded attempts at building and designing his own machine. Two years later, a Frenchman by the name of Henry Sully took on the challenge as well. Plenty of other would-be winners threw their hat in the ring for the Longitude Prize, but John Harrison proposed his inventive H1 design in 1730, a date we've mentioned. Garnering a wealth of attention, his 1730 proposal took off swimmingly. Despite making a great impression though, it wasn't until 1736 that Harrison's H1 prototype clock got tested at sea. Things moved a bit more slowly back then. His prototype fared so well that he was supplied funds to further improve his invention. So his first H1 in 1736 and then H2 in 1741 marine chronometers had used counterbalance springs instead of gravity to run their timekeeping mechanism, accounting for the motions of maritime vessels. This aspect of his invention still allowed centrifugal force to affect its accuracy to a degree. Harrison thus spent eight years building and perfecting his H3 marine chronometer. This device housed circular balances, a newly invented bimechanical strip to further deal with temperature changes, and another new invention, caged roller bearings. All of these inventions, released by Harrison in 1759, are still used in clockmaking today. Despite these innovations being incorporated, the circular balances were still not making the grade in terms of precision. This brought Harrison to his eventual H4 chronometer design. Harrison's more scaled down H4 chronometer ditched the large circular balances and bimechanical strip for a much smaller, fast beating balance wheel, alongside a temperature compensated spiral shaped spring. This iteration of Harrison's invention took vogue ideas from timekeeping, was shaped by his inventive mind, and was his most accurate and final chronometer. 
It measured to about the size of a 5 inch pocket watch. A pretty neat feat considering his original H1 was a hefty brass juggernaut of a thing. And it wasn't nearly as precise. A particular mention to note is the detent escapement was invented in 1748 during the time of Harrison's career, which is what ultimately led to modern mechanical chronometers. After Harrison's efforts, the Board of Longitude stayed active until 1828, leaving behind a legacy that lasted for over a century from when the Longitude Act was first passed. Harrison's inventions, inspired by the Board's Longitude Prize, would remain the gold standard for marine measurement until electronic movements emerged in the 20th century. Not bad, considering the man was self-educated. John Harrison was a true intellect that bled passion into his work, with hardly any means to starve. Nowadays, Mr. Harrison probably would have had to reach out through a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter, which, here at Time's Ticking, we definitely would have contributed to the cause. Hello, and thanks for watching our YouTube video today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and you can find similar videos right here. For more new and interesting content from Time Sticking on our channel, please subscribe at the link here. And for more information about wristwatch repair and watch maintenance generally, you can find us at timesticking.com. Thanks so much and have a great day.